before we get into the video, I just want to quickly say, um, if you have been following me for a little while, you may have seen that I did a bead haul video not too long ago, um, where I spent, I believe, about 80 bucks on beads from a store called powwowsupply.com, and I showed you what I got. Um, since that, the owner of powwowsupply.com, uh, her name is Ellie Mitchell, she is Ojibwe and a member of the Sag Chip Tribe, or Sorry, that's what we call it here. The Saginaw Chippewa Tribe um, from uh, Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Um, she has contacted me and just clarified a few points in the video of like questions I had about certain beads. And in the video I showed a coupon that I got. I didn't show the code in it because I didn't know like if I, if I should do that. But she also clarified that right now she is completely green with her coupons she's not printing them out so if you if you buy from Palo Supply right now you're not going to get that printed coupon in your order and that's just because there's no powwows right now and that's typically where she hands out those coupons is at powwows so without needing a physical coupon she's just going green with it right now so she has let me know what the code is and um, gave me permission to go ahead and link it in the description um, So I have the code down there Giza's Quay and a link that will automatically apply The discount to your order. So the discount is five dollars off of a fifty dollar order It's limit one per customer and it expires on September 25th of 2020. Here's where the youtuber part comes out of me <laughs> Is not like a, an affiliate code or anything. I don't earn anything from it. Yeah, it's just, it's a nice little coupon for ya. And I really like this business, so go check it out. Um, on to the tutorial. Hey, it's me. Hi. <laughs> so today, as you can tell from the title, we're going to be doing some beading. Um, so this is my second installment in my How to Bead series. Today's video, we're going to talk about two needle beading. I'll explain what that is in just a moment if you don't already know. Real quickly, I'm going to go over supplies. So today we're going to be using this Pelon number 70. It looks like this. And then we're also going to be using this Tearaway Stabilizer which looks like this. Um, so first things first, um, I'm going to put this in one of these embroidery looms. So the reason that I'm putting these on an embroidery loom is to hold the material nice and taut because when you hold it nice and taut, then um, it not only makes it easier <laughs> to bead, whoops, but it also makes it easier to have nice flat beadwork. Okay, so I made this a little too small, but um, you need to make it a little bigger <laughs> so that it'll actually fit in there, but I think it'll work for the sake of this video. Okay, so I also have my beads and then I have my Nemo thread and it has been threaded through the needle, waxed, and the end has been um, burnt with the lighter. So there's two needles. That's why it's called two needle because you're operating with two needles and two threads. One needle is going to be used for um, applying the beads. This thread will be holding the beads. And then the other needle and thread are going to be used for tacking this thread down. I'm just going to quickly show you just beading willy-nilly. <laughs> I'm going to take this apart when I'm done. So yeah, this will be the thread. Now notice when I talked about burning the ends with the lighter, that's this is what I mean. It acts like a knot. Again, you can only do this with nylon thread. If you're using like a cotton thread, then this isn't going to work because cotton is not going to melt into a ball like that. It's just going to burn. So I'm going to take a couple beads down. Um, I chose black beads 
just to have some contrast between the beads and the thread. So hopefully that works out. And when it comes to two needle beading, the amount of beads that you pick up, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just whatever you're comfortable with, I guess. Like you could do the biggest, longest string of your life if you want. I typically just like to do uh, two, about two needles worth. So for example, I would just fill up this needle and then push it down and fill it up again for a second time. As long as the space I have allows for it anyway. Of course, you know, if you're running out, then you would work out how many beads you need in a certain space. Sometimes these beads will end up being wider or skinnier like these two right here. Hopefully you can see that this bead right here is a little thinner than this bead is. So sometimes you can kind of manipulate <laughs> the fact that these beads come in different widths in order to fill up a space that you need. That is highly subjective. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to really tell you how to do that. You just kind of have to look at your work and be like, okay, can I fit two thick beads there? Or should I fit three thinner beads there, you know? Some people, what they'll do is once they load on how many beads that they need, then they'll just poke their needle through the fabric and tack it down. I don't like to do that because in my experience, the thread that you use to tack the beads down, it might um, cause, you know, a little bit of a space to happen in between the beads. And then, you know, if you have tacked down the thread enough, then it could make your um, line here longer, uh, like almost an entire bead or a couple beads longer. So I never tack this thread down. Um, I will just kind of put the needle, I like to do this, you know, put it to the side and then I will grab this. I don't, I don't know how everybody else does this. I will wrap it around my pointer finger twice like that. Careful not to pull too tightly or else, you know, you'll cut off circulation. <laughs> um, and then hold the rest of the string with my hand while grabbing, you know, the project. And then I will hold the string down with my thumb. And that helps me guide as well as holding the string taut where it needs to be um, and controlling tension. So tension is highly important. We'll get to that in a second. This is where we add the second needle. Um, so you can just begin it wherever you want. Now, everybody kind of has their own preferences on how many beads they will tack. I typically will do two or three. If I'm working with a smaller project, I do two. But if I'm working on, say, like a, a pair of leggings or whatever, you know, it could go all the way up to six or um, the typical for me is two or three. So I will add the thread or the needle um, two beads later so wherever you come up at you're gonna go down that same hole but on the other side so let me see if I can just kind of push it okay so now I'm going down that same hole but on the other side of the string and what that's going to do is your tacking thread is going to wrap around the thread that the beads are strung on. So I can, let me loosen this up just a little so I can show you better. Hopefully you can see that. This is the tacking thread and it's wrapped around those beads. Or I mean, not the beads, I'm so sorry. It's wrapped around this thread that is holding the beads on. So I mentioned before that tension is very important. 
And this is a question that I get a lot or I get complimented on my work regarding this or just people all around just talk about their struggles with it and you know whatnot. And that is like getting your beads to be nice and flat and not having them pucker and stuff like that. Um, I don't know any other causes besides tension. Perhaps the material that you use might be a factor as well. Like this is a thick material, but if you're beading on say a canvas or I don't know, that felt or I don't know anybody who beads on cotton, but if you're beading on a thinner material like a cotton, then that could also be a factor in why your beadwork is not laying flat and it's puckering. Um, but you want to have a nice, thick, that's kind of what the stabilizer is all about too. Providing a nice, thick foundation so that the material isn't being, um, isn't being pulled too tightly. Um, because what happens when you're driving the thread through these fibers here, if the fibers aren't dense enough, then the thread is going to pull the fibers and cause the material to kind of like fold in on itself. And that can impact your beadwork as well as the size of your project. You can, you can make your project smaller. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, so when it comes to tension, like I said, that is like the main problem I've identified with uh, your beadwork not being flat enough. And tension is how tightly each thread is pulled. Because you're working with two pieces of thread, you have to kind of coordinate the tension of both. So I did a few diagrams here. I just, I drew them out. Um, and I'm going to show them on the screen right now. Um, so the first example I have here of bad tension is the, the tacking thread is pulling the bead thread too tightly. Um, and that will cause your beads to pucker and uh, basically not lay flat. So I'm going to show you here if I pull, if I pull too tightly. Um, and then you can also kind of create a space in between the threads too, because since the thread is being drugged down um, against the material, then the beads can lay against each other nicely. So yeah, this is what it looks like if your tacking thread is pulled too tightly. And I can do, let me do another thing real quick. Okay, so the first four beads are what have been tacked down. And if you notice, they're not in a very clean line. They're kind of all over the place. Um, and that is what happens when you are pulling your tacking thread too tightly. Okay, so I'm going to kind of fix those <laughs> for a second. Now, here's another problem is if you aren't pulling your tacking thread tight enough, um, that can basically just cause your project to be loose, um, which you don't want that. But the negatives of pulling your beading thread too tight aren't as noticeable as pulling your tacking thread too tight, um, or like immediately noticeable. It could also just be affecting like the life of your project you know what I mean um because I don't know you're not pulling the threads tight enough and tacking them down tight enough um and you can also see the thread so we don't want that again here's a diagram you want your bead thread and your tacking thread to have an even tension where neither one or the other is being pulled tighter than the other. 
your bead thread will be completely straight and then your tacking thread will be just hugging the bead thread enough. It's holding it tightly to the material without pulling it against the material. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to try and fix this real quick. So are you able to tell which beads have been tacked down and which ones haven't? Because <laughs> I'm not sure that I can. These ones have and these ones haven't. So that is tension. I guess another uh, thing that impacts tension besides the material that you use and how taut you have the material pulled, that's why I like to use looms, is how you hold the project. So like I said earlier, I will take the bead thread, wrap it around my finger a couple times, and then hold the project and use my thumb to hold it against the material and navigate it against the material. I imagine if you didn't find a way to hold this bead thread taut if you're just kind of like doing this it would be hard for you to control the tension now what I'm going to do is talk about like uh, designs so like I said with the stabilizer you can draw on it um, and something that I wanted to touch on is how to bead two needle on a design so there's two different ways and this is actually why I really like two needle as well, besides me being able to control the tension a lot better. Um, it's also easier for me to be designs. So I'm going to draw a line, just a line <laughs> and show you how I bead on it. So this is, this depends on which route you want to go when it comes to beading two needle on your design because let's say you are beading an outline or you're, you're beading a nice vine next to your flowers or something this um two needle method is great for okay um here's where my two beads are i'm going to come up directly on the line you know now I know exactly where I need to drive my needle through in order to bead my design which is amazing um, another thing though is if you are beading shapes, you can do this. Keep in mind that because, again, here's another diagram, because your beads are certainly wider than a drawn on line, you're going to end up making your design a little bigger. So if you look towards the left, you can see me sort of comparing the width of a bead to a drawn on line. It's wider, right? And if you look towards the right, you can see that because, you know, it's the outer edge of the bead that creates a shape that your shape is going to end up bigger. So if you have a particular shape or design that you want to stay true to size, true to whatever you drew on your material, then I would suggest um, lining your beads outside or inside of the line I'm sorry inside of the line so that the um the outer edge of the bead lines up with it okay so 
because of that, you're not going to have that line, you know, telling you, okay, I'm going to drive the needle up on the line. You have to kind of do a little bit of guesswork on how, like, thick the bead is, which isn't that hard. You'll drive the needle up next to the line instead. <laughs> so these beads right here are beaded on a line and then these beads right here are beaded next to the line or inside of the line I should say um and yeah so there is two needle beading I think I might have covered what I know about it if I missed anything go ahead and leave it in the comments if you have any alternate ways that you like to do it um, or any, you know, other advice you'd like to share, leave those in the comments as well. Um, I think that I, <laughs> I, I often think that I say this, but watching my videos back, I don't think that I do as often as I need to. Um, but everybody does things a little different. You know, we learned different. Our aunties and our grandmas and our moms do things differently and it's okay. We, we all, we all do beautiful work nonetheless, even if we go about it a different way. So if you don't like how I do it, um, that's okay. You don't have to do it the way I do it. And you know, Beating is still medicine no matter how the medicine is conducted. So, yes, there's two needle beading. Next episode will be one needle beading. And, yeah, I hope this was helpful or entertaining or whatever you want it to be. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, Pete